Hello everyone, so today we will be talking about a few important tools you need to master in Photoshop to have amazing renders which are smart objects, smart filters, blended modes, layer masks and adjustment layers such as curves and hues and saturation. Don't panic as I will be taking you step by step tutorial to see how this image went from this to that in a few minutes. So first we are starting with an image of the Ministry of Justice in Manchester and we are going to add motion blur to it so that it specifically follows the lines of the building. So first we need to find the angle of the building and to do that we go to across the toolbar over here and just mouse down here and under the eyedropper will be the ruler tool. And if I just choose this corner point here of this balcony area and drag across to there, that's telling me just here that my angle is 56.1 degrees. Next, I'm going to duplicate the layer and you can either drag it onto a new layer icon or press Ctrl or Command plus J. We are going to call this one Blur because that's exactly what we're going to do to it. And I'm going to convert this to Smart Object. Smart Objects preserve an image source content with all its original characteristics enable you to perform non-destructive editing to the layer smart object it just means that we can apply this blur but we can also go back in again without seriously affecting the quality of this layer or image so if we right click just here we can convert it to a smart object and you'll see all of a sudden we have this little icon in the corner down here to tell us that this layer is actually a smart object Next, we are going into filter and we're going to select motion blur and then select the rotation angle to 56 if you remember the angle in the start of the video. And if we click on this eye icon, we can see what it looks like before and after. So you can see a lot of interesting things are happening. Next, I'm going to test out a few blended modes. The blended mode specified in the options bar controls how pixels in the images are affected by a painting or an editing tool. So many blended modes such as overlay, soft light and hard light. And for this image, I think hard light works quite well. If you want to, we can go back in and edit it. So just double click here on the motion blur and slide this over right or left. And suddenly you've got this editable layer. I think this is quite interesting as you've got these lines running off here and see how they perfectly follow on the lines of the building because we checked the angle with the ruler at the start of this tutorial. If we click in the mask here, we can show that this is applying the smart filter. So if we choose soft brush, which is B, shortcut for brush, and I want to make sure that we are working in this mask area. So click in on it and then you'll get this little bounding box on the outside of it. And I'm working at 20% and don't forget to use your keyboard shortcut, which is 1 to 3 up to not, which is 100% for the brush opacity. Because the layer mask is white, I'm going to paint in black to hide. And you always have to keep this in mind, white is to reveal and black to hide. Then we are going to paint a little bit here with a soft brush to blend the edges a bit. And then we have an interesting directional motion blur perfectly over an image. And you might find that you need to blend some of that hard light blend mode out so now we've got the mask for the smart filter we can also mask out the hard light blending mode so if we just click here that'll add a mask and now you've got masks all over the place just joking we're going to mask out some of that hard light blending mode so you can actually fine tune the blending mode as well as fine tuning the motion blur <music> We can also create stamped copy over the top of everything without even merging any of the layers. So if we click on the top layer here and then click on shift plus alt and control and E and then change the blended mode to multiply if you want to make the image darker. 
and then we're gonna add another clipping mask if we click ctrl plus i on the mask that will invert it to black which is the hide and then if we paint with white we can add a bit of density to the image last two things i want to talk about are curves hues and saturation you can obviously stop right there because i really like the image but you can also take it a few steps further so if we add an adjustment layer from here for curves in the curves adjustment you adjust points throughout an image's tonal range initially the image's tonality is represented as a straight diagonal line on a graph when adjusting an rgb image the upper right area of the graph represents the highlights and the lower left area represents the shadows so we can customize the graph making the shadows darker and the highlights whiter or lighter or brighter you can also use the presets here and choose one i quite like the increase in contrast hues and saturation lets you adjust the hue saturation and lightness of a specific range of colors in an image or simultaneously adjust all of the colors in an image so for example my favorite color is blue so i will just change the hues and saturation to my liking and because this is a grayscale image it's very easy to do so and that is all for today's video i hope you found this video helpful don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe if you haven't already i'm rasha shiroto and i will see you next time Thank <laughs> you.